Happy Easter, everyone. What's going on? Welcome to another classic Sunday night watch along, the final WrestleMania watch along of the season. Also, happy WrestleMania week. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. <laughs> it's going to be a party. It's going to be a big, big week. Big watch along tonight. Two videos tomorrow, one dropping in the morning, and then a live stream after Raw tomorrow night. A couple of mic drops Tuesday and Wednesday, predictions Thursday, SmackDown Hall of Fame review on Friday, and night one and two. Watch alongs and post show reviews all set for Saturday and Sunday. Links to all this shit is up on my channel right now. So check it out. Also, the Juliet is here welcoming us. Thanks for the two bucks. A and E biography, Roman Reigns. That's gonna be cool. Is it a Juliet, is it an hour or two hours? Because the last two episodes they've two episodes they've done, I believe, on DDP and Beefer. Uh, or was Beefcake Dark Side? Or Davy Boy. That's right. DDP and Davy Boy. Uh, were just an hour long. I'm hoping Roman is too. And Rivals is Miz and Cena. Okay. I mean, I guess they did have a couple of WrestleMania matches, but Rivals? Really? Come on now. Oh my God, what a day. I'm glad to be here though. It was a long day. I had to go make an appearance at work this morning. It's kind of my duty. So I had to go in there and, uh, you know, serve some Karens and whatnot. And of course it was really cold and rainy, a little bit chaotic. I'm a little bit tired. I haven't even cracked open my beer yet, which I'm about to do now. And now we're going to travel back 27 years to 1997 and watch WrestleMania 13. We got to get this one done. Oh, by the way, shoot, I did something wrong there. There we go. I just had to change that. Um, <clears throat> WrestleMania 13, 27 years ago now, uh, this show has been. And it's not really ranked as high you know on everybody's list in terms of one of the best wrestlemanias but it definitely had one of the best ever wrestlemania matches so we're going to be taking a look back at wrestlemania 13 other than austin and brett you know the main event is kind of interesting really fun chicago street fight with uh, lod and the nation i'm not even sure what else we're going to see on the show i don't really remember it's not a great one from what i remember but it's a hot market in chicago it's the rosemont horizon and uh, this is still a legendary show, even though I don't think WrestleMania 13 is very high on everybody's list of greatest ever. <laughs> Shane, how did she react to the decaf? We don't know because they don't know she's getting decaf. That's what I do whenever I, I don't really work daytimes or brunches or anything at the restaurant. But whenever there's a holiday, I always go in. But, you know, you have people when you go up to and greet them at, at brunch, you're like, hey, hello, how you doing? They're like, Coffee. You know, I'm like, Jesus, you know, like can't, they can't even function. They can't even say a sentence unless they get their coffee. And I think that's fucking weak. So I give them decaf. <laughs> Stay tired and grumpy all fucking day like I care. Uh, and they will never know because you can't taste the difference. So we just, uh, when somebody's an asshole, I'm like, give them decaf. Give them decaf, let them continue to be grumpy. And uh, people are jerks. Even on a holiday, people can't be nice, you know? Mm. But anyway, I got to stop chit-chatting too much let me do some welcomes some hellos knock out these super chats and then we will start wrestlemania 13 you guys know what to do go over to your peacock pull up wrestlemania season 13 episode one according to peacock our runtime tonight is going to be two hours 47 minutes and 13 seconds so under three hours not bad should be a quick watch and should be pretty fun as we finally put a bow on our wrestlemania watch alongs for the year um let me say hello to my friend Barry, Hawaiian Barry, in here with five bucks. But if we watch this, but if we watch this, we'll miss Dora. It was on the TV guide. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't want to miss Dora. Hopefully, you have DVR'd Dora, Barry. That's what I recommend. That's what I do. Uh, that way, I can binge my Dora whenever I have time. Uh, George Moores is in the house. What's up, dude? Always happy to see you. Hey, Greg, how are you doing? How is Tito? WrestleMania 13, 10 out of 10. This match is on 2K24 Showcase, Austin Hart. My cat Strudel was fighting with Stray Cat. That's dangerous. Get Strudel inside. No Stray Cat fighting. That's how you get infections and rabies and all that stuff. So don't be letting your cat fight. Here in California, you can't really let your cats out because coyotes will eat them. So Tito has been an indoor cat his whole entire 11-year life. He's never been outside ever. <clears throat> Sports and wrestling experience has dropped in two fours. Ready for the watch-along. Thanks for doing these. Of course, we are three years deep into these watch-alongs now. They've been fun, really fun little community and gathering every week doing this. It's a blast. And it uh, puts, you know, content on the channel. And that's what's important. And there's going to be a lot of content coming this week. So stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe. Please do that if you're not yet already. Thumbs up button would also help get them likes up as we 
roll in to WrestleMania 40 weekend. We Are Pro Wrestling is right. Without Austin and Brett on the show, it might be the worst WrestleMania of all time. I would like to know what would have happened had it would it if it would have been Bretton and Sean part deux uh, at WrestleMania 13. But smiles were lost. And plans were changed, and that's kind of what happens. Uh, let me just qu- do some quick shout-outs, and then we'll hit play, since you guys are hopefully getting your uh, peacocks queued up. Good to see Jeff McMahon, J.D. Jones, Ohio, Boise State fan, and Tatanani, early channel members right off the bat. Also, we have Zach Palgett, Brandon O'Neill, and Victor and Zane G, and Jay Lambo, more channel members, along with Isaac. We also have the Juliet is here, of course, as always. Uh, trying to hit these channel members. George, I got you. Isaac, I got you. Uh, Ben Espinoza, pretty sure I got you. I'm not sure. Uh, I swear I forget if I say the name right after I say it, so I suck. Uh, Also, we got Nate Dogg in the house, Wade, Mike Rouse, uh, Blair Hathaway is here. What's the worst WrestleMania you've seen? Well, shit, Blair. Uh, Probably 11. Got to go WrestleMania 11. MJ Parker, channel member in the house. So is Daniel Clark. Um, Ray Frand is here. We also have T85. We got Fleming. You watching Baywatch document? No. Is there a Baywatch document I need to know about? Is it typed out? No, I guess you mean documentary. No, I probably will not watch the Baywatch documentary because I never watched Baywatch. I mean, it was on, you know, I tune in to see, you know, Pamela Anderson jiggling her chesticles around every now and then, you know, as a a teenager or something. But I never really uh, watched Baywatch ever. I thought the show fucking sucked. Uh, James, what's up? Good to see you as well. Shane is here. Jacob's here. Ryan uh, is in the house. We are pro wrestling. Always happy to have you here in case I have some questions, but my knowledge is pretty solid in 1997. Stephen Harris, Sonic Plays. We got Daniel Barry. Andy Linnell is here. Right on. Whole bunch of people. Well, shit, we better, I better shut up and get going here since we got a lot of people. And it's been a long day. I only got four hours of sleep, had to wake up in the morning, go into work, came straight here, ate a taco, and went live. So I got to try to stay awake. I did knock back a five-hour energy. I ate a little adult gummy bear for Easter, and I got a cold beverage. Happy Easter. Greg is risen. All right, well, let's rock and roll here. Let me get my fingers on the timer and ready. And last week, I actually fucked up the timer, uh, and I don't often do that. So this week, I'm going to make sure I get it right. All right, we're going to do a countdown from three, three, two, one, play. That's what we're going to do. So get your fingers all ready, and we will do it right now. And uh, wow, this is perfect timing, too. This show should end right at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11. Wait, what the fuck? It's going to end at uh, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11. Yeah, we're going to end right at 11 o'clock here. I was a little confused for a second. So right at the top of the hour, this is going to be a perfect, even three-hour stream. This is going to be nice. All right, here we go. Countdown from three. Three, two, one, play. Yes, I have done it. I was worried. I wish I knew this feller's name who does the voiceovers. I remember when he passed away being really sad because his voice is kind of overlaid on my, my, my childhood, you know, or maybe not childhood, but when I was younger, but this year, this feels like it's all intact. Oh, by the way, you can barely see it on camera here, but we do have the WrestleMania 13 VHS right here. Sid and Taker. We got stuff on the backside. It's not in the best condition. It's a little gnarly on top, but I've got it. It's here. Tonight. Yeah, the LOD and uh, the Nation. Now, this is the match I want to see at WrestleMania for Cross and AOP and uh, Street Profits and Lashley. A Philly street fight. I think that would be tremendous. And tonight. All right, we're going through the intro here. I mean, this would have been, I guess, the second year in a row now. There was no celebrities. They just didn't do celebrities for 12 and 13. They're like, fuck it. But then they did him. They were back for uh, 14 and 15. A ton of them, 14. 
bitch of a time finding a clean logo for this uh, pay-per-view. A clean render of the logo. What is this place called now? Allstate Arena, right? This was the site of Monday Night Raw just last week, correct? Trying to read the signs. Oh, yeah, that Undertaker sign, that old school Coca-Cola sign, that uh, banner that sat there at the Rosemont for so many years. All right. I miss the old WrestleMania theme, this one. I don't even know what the first match is. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's going to be Hillbillies and Blackjacks, maybe. So, uh, once again, as per usual here on the network, we have got Hillbilly Jim's own WWE theme dubbed over with some bullshit. That's nice. While the uh, gravy-sweating cousin fuckers are making their way to the ring, let's answer five bucks from Barry. The WWE 2K24 showcase is awful. Too much real-life footage, not enough actual game. I wanted to play a game. You know what that sounds like to me, Barry? Sounds like the Sega CD. Back in the day, Sega released a CD video game adapter, and all it was was just, like, footage. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, but I don't even know what the showcase is, Barry, so you ain't even speaking my language. But I feel like uh, that might be something similar to what we dealt with back in the 90s with the Sega CD. Uh, let's see. Good to see Smitty. Welcome, channel member. <laughs> this music is god-awful. Ah, Ray Rougeau! I salute you, sir. Ray Rougeau, Ray Rougeau Mark right here. Big one. Always have been. Fucking stash is looking Perfect. There's two dorks behind Vince. All right. Oh, it's headbang. I don't know why I thought it was blackjacks. Maybe this is a multi-man deal. I forgot. Yeah, four teams according to Mr. Jim Ross. Yeah, we were going to try to get to WrestleMania 9, Wade, uh, but I didn't make it this year, so that one's going to have to wait till next year. We're going to have to do 1, 2, 9, 11... We're going to do some shitty ones next year. But we did do 13 and 15 this year, so that helped. Brother, 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 brother. 19 months for the Spazster. Right on. Michael Kumo's got five. I have this that VHS tape. I also had WrestleMania 13 from the video box set. Me too. Uh, both had different commentary in the beginning of the Rock and Sultan match. Interesting. Yeah, I do have that... Uh, 13 i think it was 97 that came out it was 13 wrestlemania box vhs set it's in my closet i have that copy of wrestlemania 13 as well and then i also have the dvd that came in the dvd box set so i guess i have three wwe copies of the show and one personal copy that i recorded off pay-per-view the night it aired so i got four copies <laughs> all different of wrestlemania 13 plus the peacock version so make it five cinco it's spanish for five do you need more numbers translated? I'm your guy. Yeah, those are the Blackjacks. Wow, with Captain Lou. I mean, Bobby had the Blackjacks in AWA, Lanza and uh, Mulligan. And to me, like, <clears throat> as crazy as it sounds, I didn't totally hate the Blackjacks. I really liked Barry Windham. Always have been a Barry Windham fan. He looks just like Mulligan. I mean, it's unbelievable when he did this, when he dyed his shit and did the mustache. I mean, maybe it's a little bit of a dated gimmick, but if you're ever going to recreate a team from the past, this is about as good as it gets. I mean, I dare say, I dare, I argue that JBL and Barry Windham in the ring are better than Lanza and Mulligan. They're faster, quicker, more athletic. And that's a better version of the Blackjacks, to be honest. But they were kind of short-lived, too. 
And the Blackjacks and the Godwins is kind of interesting. We got uh, Furness and Lafon over here. And Lafon, he was Dan Crowfat, right? And I thought for sure when they brought Furness and Lafon in, they were going to win tag team titles. It felt like they were going to put them over Davey and Owen, but they never really got over. Solid team. Doug Furness, fucking tremendous dropkick. Strong bastard, too. Henry's full of, gi- full of grits. Spaz has got 10 Canadians for us. What with WWE bringing the smaller screen because they sold so many tickets. They already announced they were doing that in Toronto for all that. Uh, what if they did no Tron crowd slash crowd entrances? Uh, I wouldn't do that. I'd have some sort of Tron up there. Um, but yeah, they could go super minimalist, you know, back like the old school uh, Monday Night Raws just with the R.A.W. <laughs> but they don't really produce TV like that anymore. Wrestling just doesn't produce TV like that anymore. But it's not going to be a long-term thing because, you know, wrestling attendance, you know, being so hot the way it is right now, you know, that ain't going to last forever. You know, WWE, they'll, they'll hit a skid and, you know, things will cool down. So they don't want to, like, change their whole, oh, we just got to get rid of all our sets. We're going to sell out every building. That will end. <laughs> they will not sell out every building. Hot streaks all come to an end. They don't last forever. So I would just keep doing what they're doing and then have that secondary minimal set for when they know they're going to be popping off. But... You know, I wouldn't be stroking ourselves too crazy over WWE's attendance right now. It's WrestleMania season. I would expect them to do well. Anything less than a sellout, I think, would kind of be a disappointment for somebody like WWE. So uh, the tribals, like you, Spaz, uh, I know are uh, getting hard over it, but just chill, man. It's not even that big of a deal. (laughs) But I think WWE, the house show attendance they're doing has been tremendous. SmackDown and Raw's have been selling like fucking crazy. So it shouldn't be surprising that during the hottest time of year, they're going to do well. (laughs) So uh, I don't think uh, any permanent solutions are necessary there. Barry's got 10. WWE games have done a showcase mode for 10 years now. They used to remake classic match moments within the game, but now they just use real life footage. Oh, okay. It's pretty lazy. I see. That makes sense. Telling you, Barry, Sega CD. That's what you got. And Spaz is dropping a pod on WrestleMania worst case scenarios later tonight. Catch it where you did vid and pod. Uh, or catch it where you vid and pod. Oh, what a Rana on. I'm not giving this match any love. Yeah, worst case scenarios is kind of interesting, actually. <laughs> Check out Spaz's worst case scenarios for WrestleMania 40. Cody gets hit by a bus crossing the street from the hotel to the arena. That's your worst case scenario. (laughs) Okay, so King just threw out a hypothetical. I believe he was asking what happens if partners tag each other. Because these these type of matches were still kind of... Not that common. Oh, that was terrible. I think Furnace wanted to get off his dropkick there, and it did not work. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Wyndham. I mean, this is so much better to me than the stalker, you know. Doug Furnace. T85 was Pillman at this mania. He was around. I think I remember watching. What's weird is I, the crazy memories I sometimes have. I'm pretty sure. All right, we got a count out somewhere. Okay, Blackjacks have eliminated themselves. Adios, JBL. Um, what the fuck was I just going to say? Oh, yeah, Pillman. I think I watched either like Livewire or Superstars or something the morning of WrestleMania. And I remember Pillman and Sean having like an interaction. 
But Sean seemed angry, and I don't know why Sean would be angry here. He just... He's been smile searching, so I don't know what the fuck. What memory I'm having. Their granny taught him that move. Matt Bork. Hey, I sent you a message. <laughs> What's up? My Pontiac, my Pontiac brother. We were both, me and Matt were both born in the same hospital. Pontiac General Hospital. I don't remember much about the day I was born. I remember we're getting ready to move out of my mom's uterus. I was packing up my shit. Because I don't want to leave anything in there, you know. So I'm, you know, kind of getting my clothes ready, my suitcase and my bags and Things like that, and I, I walked out of her vagina and walked uh, walked into Pontiac General Hospital. But you know, I was so young, I, I don't remember much about the actual journey, you know, through the birth canal. I just remember kind of you know packing up and then gracing the world with my presence. People were very happy. Most people said they they couldn't even believe somebody could be born so beautiful. Yeah, I was just born beautiful. They said, you know, I didn't think somebody could be that beautiful, but he was. That's what they say about me every day. Every day. They're spitting on each other. Have the bangers won? No, they have not. I was about to say, have the bangers won the tag team titles? That would come later on in September. Shit, did they beat? Who they beat? I think they beat Owen and Bulldog. I always loved Henry Godwin. He looks like... <laughs> you know who Henry Godwin looks like? He looks like a jacked-up Kenny Powers. Does he not? Tell me that ain't Kenny Powers right there in some overalls right now. That's him. Just fatter. Or stronger, I should say. Ooh. Eastbound and down, filmed in the town that I used to live in, by the way. The scene at the uh, BMW dealership with uh, Will Ferrell, that was across the street from my house. I was late for work because they cut off the street and I couldn't get out. I had to take like a detour around and it made me like 15 minutes late for work. And I'm like, they're fucking filming something over there. And then like a year later, the show comes out and I'm like, oh, that was the day. I bet you that was what made me late that day for work was when they were filming at the dealership. Hey, help me out here. Is this match, is there any stakes? Is like the winner, the number one contender? What does the VHS tape say? Doesn't say shit. Just says four team elimination tag match. So there's not even the belts aren't even on the line. So what is point? Man, that's not a good move for the headbangers to do, but they did pull it off. OG Mike Witt, I'll always consider you an OG, Mike, no matter what channel icon you have next to your name, because you've been us, been with us forever. Next year is the 40th anniversary of the first WrestleMania. May I request a watch-along of it for next year? Yes, you may. Because <laughs> I, I kind of dissed you this year, didn't give you WrestleMania 1, but next year would make the most sense since it's the 40th anniversary. So we'll watch it next year for sure. God, what are we going to be doing? What is shit going to look like by the time we get to the... WrestleMania 41 week. Who's going to win next year's Rumble? <clears throat> Gee, wow, pretty good uh, moonsault there by uh, Thrasher. I'm trying to remember the headbangers' names. Is Thra Thrasher, I think, is Glenn? And Mosh is Chaz or something? I forgot. Right 
buttermilk and cornbread. I don't like milk, and I certainly don't want milk with butter in it. Sounds thick. Oh. Is that like a whoopee cushion? Look at the fucking headbangers getting a WrestleMania win. You know what? I guess, I guess it never really registered that the headbangers have a win at WrestleMania. I think that's their only... Were they in that battle royal the, the following year in 98? Uh, because otherwise I feel like this is their only WrestleMania appearance. They were probably in that battle royal last year. Or the next year. <clears throat> Mosh and Thrasher. Mike Witt, two bucks. Happy WrestleMania week to you, Greg, and chat. It's going to be a big one. Depending on where you live, if you live in the U.S. tomorrow, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, final special episode of the season will drop. And I'm not going to tell you what the topic is, but it's a big WrestleMania discussion. Hmm. Honky, why why are you poisoning 1997? Is Rockabilly with you yet? That's next month. I think Rockabilly comes soon. La Arnold Skoland. Who are these guys behind him? They look one looks familiar. This <laughs> is This was so silly. I think Honky is out here to do commentary for Goldust and Triple H or Hunter Hearst Helmsley. And around this time, I think even on that Thursday Raw Thursday when Hunter lost the title to Rocky, they're trying to make Honky Honky seem really invested on whether or not he was going to win or not. Oh, God. Look at Carlos Cabrera jamming out. You're a menace, Carlos. Oh, no, that's not. It's not. It's a Sultan and Rocky, not Hunter and Goldust. All right. I unfortunately had to watch this match about a week or so ago before I did that collab with uh, Steve from Going In Raw, and we had to talk about rock WrestleMania matches, and I had to watch this one. I pulled it up just to kind of refresh my memory, and I'm like, oh, yeah. So this is all kinds of fun. Sultan's got Iron Sheik and... I missed the Bob Backlund with him, which is crazy. I said on Monday night, no, I'm sorry, I said yesterday in the podcast that Rikishi should show up in the main event, night two, bloodline rules. And then Austin should show up in a four-wheeler and run him over, run him down the aisle in the aisle way. It's 20, 24 years in the making. Revenge. What a horrible gimmick. I mean, did they borrow uh, Oz's hat from WCW to put on a, the Sultan? He's shrinking heads. He's making changes. He's sultaning people. Whenever I hear the name Sultan, I think of Sultans of Swing. Sultan of Swing, Dire Straits. Oh, Jesus, Mike Witt. Two more bucks to pitch AJ Lee and Punk for Seth and Becky at Mania 21. Maybe. Hope AJ's doing well. It's got to be rough. <laughs> Fucking living with Punk, man. He has probably talked her ear off. Oh, he's going to run? Rock's going to run? Okay. Get your jog on. I remember this version of Rocky's theme. Just watching him not know what he's doing yet is so funny, isn't it? Like, after what we've seen from The Rock all year long so far, leading up to Mania. And here he is, 
And he's doing all the, ah, you know, you know how the guys do and they make the little things and he's doing all the things. Oh, he's so terrible here. This fucking song. Rocky Johnson. Oh, there's Tony Atlas. The Sultan kind of reminds me of uh, Lord Tenzai. Just like a what the fuck gimmick. Ah, Shane, shout out to the Dire Straits, man. Back when I was a teenager, I had a souped up Nissan Sentra. I put like subwoofers in the trunk and I had a whole system CD changer and everything. One of my favorite songs to play in that system was uh, Money for Nothing. Sounded so good on the bass. I wanted to have a different overlay ready. I found an awesome piece of WrestleMania 13 custom art artwork. Somebody like made a cool WrestleMania 13 poster, found it on Instagram and uh, messaged the guy, asked him if I could use it, but didn't hear back. I just found it last night. I found it last night, like three in the morning. So I, I, uh, I put a comment under the video or under the, the image asking for permission to use it, but never heard back. So I didn't want to. I want to respect it. You know, I want to respect, even though I'm sure this guy would have no problem using it and plugging the plugging his Instagram account and giving him some publicity. I still like to respect people's work, and I don't want to take it unless I get absolute permission. So uh, I had a backup plan. That's why I had to change the overlay real quick when we went live because I'm like, oh, I never got rid of the old one. So if he gets back to me <laughs> throughout the course of the... Uh, Stream here. I'll change it over. I've got it prepped and ready once I get the green light from the feller. But I usually do my own stuff. Every now and then I'll find a nice piece of something. I'll have to contact somebody. I'm like, yo, bro, can I use this? Looks awesome. But I didn't have time to put any of this together today. So whatever I was going to do for the watch along today, I had to do last night because I worked all day today. So I got... An overlay ready if he gets back to me, and an overlay ready if he doesn't get back to me. And I put them both in here, and I had the wrong one up when we came live. I mean, other than this match, and it would have been, what, Survivor Series 2000, right? Any other pay-per-view matches involving Rock and Rikishi? Other than those two, I think that's it. Oh, there's a country remake of Walk of Life by Shooter. <laughs> oh, that's funny. A country, a country singer named Shooter? What a surprise. Who's his cousin? Gunner and Wyatt and uh, who else? What's another popular one? Jesse. Travis. That might be worth looking up, though. I don't listen to country music, but a country version of Walk of Life. Oh, yo, how wheezy. You are now going to WrestleMania night one. Awesome. Not night two, just night one so far, wheezy? Maybe you didn't bother getting tickets for night two because you know you're going to do a run-in on night one and probably be, be ejected from the building and banned. You seem like the type of guy, how wheezy, that would run in during that Jade and Bianca and Naomi match. That's probably where you're what you're looking to do. Go 
Wilson now. That's the thing that he can toy around with the rookie. Rocky Maivia, set up at the line. Off the God, well, all right. So WrestleMania 13 is off and running here with the first two matches being two big, gigantic, filled to the brim, brim cups of who gives a fuck. Oh, Rock, you gotta, you can't take that belly to belly better than that. You gotta get up. Man, they made Rikishi do that to his hair and shit. God, it's so crazy. There's a guy that comes into my restaurant every summer, just for the summertime, the horse races, and he owns a couple of strip clubs in Vegas, and he always shows up with, like, girls that work with him, and we always kind of roll out the red carpet with him. He's got a lot of money, and he's got hair just like the Sultan, except without the muzzle on his face. He has no hair, but then the phony tail on the back, he looks so weird. He's probably, like, in his 60s, and he's always got, like, Definitely women that are employed by him, for sure, joining him for dinner. Tips great, spends money. Whenever they, whenever he comes in, the server's like, all right, I'm about to make 300 bucks off this guy. They get very excited. Shout out to Omar. <laughs> 13 is the ultimate one-match show. It really is. It really is. I forgot around this time WWE was putting those little patches on the referee shirts briefly. Another thing that weird to happen with WWE and WCW is they flopped ref gear. I swear WCW and NWA was doing the stripes. WWE was doing the powder blue bow tie. Then around this time, they switched. I'm trying to think. God, I gotta say, it's gotta be '95. When did the when did the stripes start showing up? I think it was '95, late '95, mid '95. I'm trying to visualize some matches. Mr. Mac, man. Oh, wow. I did not know that we are pro wrestling. No wonder this was the lowest bought WrestleMania in history before the network came to be. Wow. Lowest buy rate ever, huh? Like many, many years ago on the channel, I swear I did like a top 10 WrestleManias and I put 13 on it. I don't know what crack I was smoking that day. I apologize. I must have just been basing it on the strength of Austin and Brett, but my God, top 10? Are you kidding me? I mean, granted, that was probably 10 years ago, maybe even longer, so there was only about 30 WrestleManias at the time, but still. Ugh. Rockla, that's his very first move, that float over counter into the DDT. It's the very first thing he ever learned. He still does it, too. Watching him do this high cross bullshit, I hope he busts one of these out at WrestleMania this year. Oh, Sheik's got him. Got Earl. Fucking Sheik. Oh, nice. I mean, even fa even fans who paid somewhat attention and were maybe just one notch above a casual fan would easily be able to tell that that's one of the head shrinker guys. 
I mean, they did their best to hide it with the muzzle and uh, hiding his big ass. Oh, that was pretty close there on Rocky. <laughs> top 10, yeah, top 10 worst. Oh, and he rolled him up. Oh, for sure, Gilbert. He's doing the sharpshooter. I'm just wondering if he'll bust out any really old school moves like going to the top rope and shit. So now we're going to get this post-match interview right off the bat. Which no, which means you know something's going to happen here. And there's uh, Sultan. Give it to him. Don't hit him with that beautiful Intercontinental title. That's Intercontinental title abuse. If anybody wants to know where they can get good mic work for Christmas, if you want to search how to find and purchase one of the original ring-worn Intercontinental titles. My P.O. box is on my channel. Oh! No matter what silly gimmick Rikishi is in, that top rope splash is always crazy. And now he's got the camel clutch on the rock! Camel clutch to the rock! While he's getting bitch slapped by his cousin. This is just all sorts of bad. I did it for the Iron Sheik. And Bob back. You want, you want to get in the ring, Bob? Here. Oh, look. Look, here's Rocky Johnson. This is what I was talking about in the video last week. He's doing all his stuff. He's doing his dancing and his shit. And nobody gives a fuck. Look at this crowd. Like, I like Rocky Johnson. Back in the day, he was... His shirt's all ripped. He just loves doing that shit. Him and Rock both always had to do that little stuff. This is so stupid. God damn, why are you trying to help your son when you still got three enemies in the ring? Fucking idiots. Rocky, your dad's stupid. Look at Johnson. I mean, he's an old man. He's still in shape, though. He'll still whoop you. I wouldn't want to come home from school after doing something wrong and that guy being my dad. Look, now Rocky's back up. Now I'm going to save my daddy. I punch you. I'm going to punch the other guy too in a minute once I do my little thing. There we go. They always got to do that. <laughs> these, these early days of Rock are so cringy. Watch him and him and his dad are going to do some sort of tandem shit and they're going to, they're going to do that shake their arms thing. It's so fucking dumb. Wow, body slam to Sheik. Watch this thing here. That's <laughs> so fucking stupid. God. Oh, this WrestleMania is terrible so far. And look, now Rock's like mad. I told my dad to leave or to not interfere, and now I still have to hug him anyway. I mean, most of these fans aren't going to remember Rocky, even in 97, you know, they're not going to remember Rocky Johnson. I did. <laughs> Rocky Johnson's still in shape, though, man. <laughs> I've never shared a bare-chested skin-on-skin hug with my dad. <laughs> it's never been something we've done. <laughs> Rocky Johnson didn't even have a ticket. Oh, Shammy. Oh, yeah. Billy is just a couple months removed from being a smoking gun here. To come after you? Why are you coming after the referee? 
and neither one of these guys will intimidate me in either either or or one of their favor. I'm here as to be a referee, and that is what I will do, and I will raise the winning hands, and I will not be intimidated. And Tim Rock, the... He will not be intimidated. Good for you. Todd P. TP. <laughs> China. Unmistakable arms. A personal assistant, employee, her boss. Hunter, you still got that voice, that blue blood voice. Yeah, last mania for Todd. That's true. That sucks. Isn't this also, this is a rematch from, oh, okay. We cut out of that. This is a rematch from uh, Royal Rumble. And that was when Mr. Hughes turned up. So he didn't last long. A couple weeks. Okay, so this is about Triple H trying to get, or Hunter Hearst Helmsley trying to get with Marlena. And Marlena doesn't, gives him the Heisman, and then he's butthurt about it. I guess that's what's happening here. I mean, I went to shows back in the day. Every single sign, every single sign, fan sign made about China had to reference something about her having a dick or being a man. Real creative. I'm like, can we come up with something a little more original? Is that the best you got? Let me guess. You also don't like it when people virtue signal, do you? It's always the same type of people. <laughs> and Marlena now, let me see. I guess she had been with Gold Dust for about a year. A little over a year now she was in. Gold Dust rocking the bangs. Shout out to Jim Johnson. Gold Dust theme was tremendous. I like the one they like the the updated version of the one they would use. I couldn't tell you the year. Not not the artist artist formerly known as, but maybe before that. Well, shit, it is before that. So it might have been after artist. Maybe when he returned, that maybe theme still had the same melody and beat. It was just different. So we got Barry Windham, Dustin Rhodes, Steve Austin, Vader, and Cactus Jack all having uh, matches on this WrestleMania. It's WCW up in here. All we got to do is get Johnny B. Bad in here, and we got ourselves a party. Personal, 
What hip word did I not? Am I not allowed to say? I forgot what I even said. Stick with gnarly and tubular. 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 I don't even remember what I just said. What the fuck did I say that I'm not allowed to say? I'm not the right person to ask about uh, which is better, attitude error or ruthless aggression. Because I lived, breathed, ate, and slept the Attitude Era. I was ingrained in it about as much as you could. I went to all the shows. I was traveling, going to pay-per-views, going to shows. By the Ruthless Aggression Era, I was checked out. But I think if you judge the two side by side, you know, to a, a fan without any personal ties to either era, Ruthless Aggression might get the nod. Marlena smoking that cigar, man. Cigars are fucking disgusting. I have some guy friends that like to smoke cigars. They try to get me to smoke one one time. I just took... I'm like, this is stupid. I'm not smoking this. Like, <laughs> this is the dumbest fucking thing. You're not supposed to inhale it. I'm like, what's the fucking point? Sucking on a big brown dick. Come on. Oh, in the face. That was actually a pretty good kick there by... Gold dust. I mean, I feel like the meat of this card is that Chicago street fight, Brett and Austin, and then the main event. I mean, there is a whole bunch of nothing going on other than that. What else we got on this shit? Oh, yeah, Owen and... Okay, so we just have those matches left plus uh, the tag. Crazy. <laughs> she got bigger arms than you, King. Nope. Superplex. Y'all better be careful up here. Ouch. Yo, Zach, what's up, dude? <laughs> Shit, man, I don't even know. Hey, Greg, happy Mania week. What is your favorite gold dust match you've seen? I don't know if I've ever really thought about one of my favorite gold dust matches. I mean, no, he has great ones. He's good. Favorite gold dust match. You know, it might sound crazy, but maybe that one where him and Cody beat the shield. In these days, though, um, I'm trying to think if he, he just doesn't have any, he has, he's a good worker, but he doesn't have any matches that really stand out to me as just being overly tremendous. He had, you know what? He had a great one with Sean on my birthday. He had a great one with Sean on my birthday in like 96 or something that was pretty good on Raw. Maybe that was against Sid that night. That might have been against Sid. No, wait, that was the next week. Yeah, I think it was... Shit, I don't fucking remember. He had a good one with Sean. Ah, on Raw. And it's really hard to... I have a bad one with Sean, so. Him and Brett had a couple matches, but none of them really stand out. Backlot Brawl was pretty good. I don't know if I count that as a match, though, because they filmed all the bullshit like a week before and then finished everything in the ring.
<laughs> Lawler, you are fucking horrible. There's nothing at all likable about you whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, there. See, we are pro wrestling concurs. The shield match or backlot brawl. I got there in my head. It just took me a, a little bit. The conceited rich man from Greenwich, Connecticut. Yeah, and Goldust, like, he's had some war, even in these days. Like, th these matches he had with Triple H weren't bad. He had matches with Sean that were good. His matches with Razor were good. Uh, that match he had with Bam Bam, uh, you know, when he debuted, you know, 95. Same thing with Janetti. Those are all fine. G Dustin's a good worker. Uh, JR, Vince McMahon is not going to know who Wilbur Snyder is. Vince didn't even know who AJ Styles was when he came in. I like the high knee. I'm always I'm a mark for high knee. I love a good high knee. Harley Race. Triple H, Beefcake. I don't need to be that intimate with Goldust's face. You know what I mean? That camera shot was like... Too much. I'm like, do I got to see your teeth? Oh, yeah, Daniel, Dustin was tremendous in WCW. He had great matches there as the natural. He knew Tom Green and thought he wasn't funny. Who, Dustin? This is the Tom Green show. It's not the Green Tom show. This is my favorite show because it is my show. He lives in a van now, I heard. Tom Green. <laughs> that was a Kevin Dunn shot. Yeah, get up in there. Just get right up on in there. I want to see the saliva bubbles in his mouth. Yeah, Kevin. Well, I don't. So. Nice DDT. I love how gold does too. He would start get hot. He'd start peeling off his. Uh, he'd start unzipping. Things got to be so hot. I just don't see how you can breathe in that. Like, if you had to make weight for something, that's what you'd put on, isn't it? He always has that wedgie up his ass. Oh, I'd hate to wear that. I'd almost hate that worse than jeans. I had already, uh, when Goldust debuted, I had already graduated high school. But a few months before, that was the year I graduated, 95, in the summertime. And that year, earlier that year, I was in the drama class and, you know, we did the plays and everything. And I was very involved in that. And I was fucking around in the 
costume room one day and I'm in there with one of my friends and we find this like a uh, gold jumpsuit, just like something gold dust would wear. And she's like, you gotta put this on, please put this on. Everybody's out there. Let's walk out there with you wearing this thing. And she helps me put it on. Like where she's, we're, she's dressing me in this thing, putting this thing on and zipping it up. And she goes, now go out. And I went out in front of the entire class wearing what can only be described as a gold dust jumpsuit. Same thing, same length, all the way down the arms, legs, and it zipped up in the front just like that one did. I don't know what the hell we used that for. I had never seen it. And I went out, I got a road warrior pop from my classmates. It was awesome. I had people write in my yearbook, like, when you came out in that gold jumpsuit, that was a thing. And then six months later, gold dust debuts. And I'm like, man, if only he would have been in a year earlier i could have oh ass to the face a keister clobber oh my god if kali would have came in in 96 or 95 they would have just made him champion immediately. He beat Bret Hart in five seconds. I guess the only guy in the roster back then that could beat him would be Undertaker. The most mesomorphic woman. Who? This is also, I believe, the final time WWE would use this old school WrestleMania logo, too. This is it. This is the final uh, old school WrestleMania. I purposely didn't put the Austin and Brett bloody screenshot as my thumbnail. I didn't know if YouTube would want that. I'm like, YouTube might not want a whole bunch of blood all over your shit. So <laughs> I used a different one for the video. Oh, man, Ian Dunn, I would love nothing more than for Mania to be in Vegas. I feel like it's going to be Minnesota, though. Yeah, Scratch Logo would still take a while. Scratch Logo was in at the end of the year, I think. They started running those added those attitude vignettes. All right, Marlena's about to get, about to get got. I was he gonna try to slingshot him over? Oh, he sees. Oh no! Look, well, that's. <laughs> Watching her shake her like that—it's just fucking cra crazy. <coughs> I was watching Raw live the night China debuted at the bowling alley with my friends. And we had Raw up on the TV that was like hanging from the the ceiling, like over our lanes. And you didn't have sound on it. So I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Seeing her come in there and I was at home at home. I was taping the show, but I was watching it at the bowling alley <laughs> and I had no idea what I was looking at. And another loss for Gold Dust. This music. Poor Marlena.
Cracked her ribs. I'm surprised he's moving her. Well, how you got to get out of the ring with her now? You throw over the top rope? What is with these close-ups? Jesus Christ. Goldust kind of looks like Eminem. He looks like Slim Shady. <laughs> she jumped. She jumped into China's arms. She tried, to, she tried to jump into China's arms to escape. Watch, she jumps. Watch, she jumps to attack her. Yeah! She brought it on herself. So funny. There's Shawn Michaels. Look at that laptop. How thick does that thing need to be? He's in cyberspace. Hey, look, guys. Sean's in cyberspace. It's America Online. Oh, it's time. It's Vader time. All right, this is going to be the tag team uh, title match coming up here. Oh, yeah, I forgot Paul Bear is with them. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get another beer. I'm going to say a quick goodbye to Elizabeth. Be right back. Hey, who's the leader of the team, guys? Sorry. I've not, like, me and Elizabeth live together, okay? I've not seen her in two days. We've both been, like, super busy, so she just came home. I want to say hello to her. And then she's got to leave again, so. We work hard in this house. All right. God, they look so good with those belts, don't they? Owen and, uh, and Davey. I was a little bummed out with the Davey A&E because I don't know how you don't give him two hours, you know? So when I saw it was just going to be an hour long, I'm like, well, they're going to gloss over everything. They're not going to tell me anything I don't know. The one thing I will say about that, though, that I've never seen before was Diana video recording him when he's fucked up on pills. And they showed a lot of that. And that was kind of sad. But in terms of, like, his story and his career path... We know all that already. Thank you for waiting for those of you who just kind of sat here and watching an empty chair for three minutes. Oh, 
In any event. God, Vince, Vince in his in any events. He loves that, doesn't he? In any event. Nonetheless. Uh, Cornette, Smitty, I believe at this time, had moved away from the road and into creative. That's why they put Paul Bear with uh, Vader. And I'm pretty sure that happened to what? The Rumble, right? It was Vader and Taker. Or maybe Paul Bear was already with him by then. But I know Jim Cornette left the road to work creative. Because there wasn't much left at Camp Cornette. I mean... These two, old Bulldog and Owen, were in it the previous year. These three guys were teammates at WrestleMania 12. And Mankind debuted the day after. <laughs> Mankind's lost an ear. Vader's had an eye pop out. Owen was killed. I mean, this is just a Bulldog, you know. His career was shortened all, or his life was shortened all due to a backdrop on a top on a trap door. Lots of unfortunate accidents and tragedies in this one. And we've got three wrestlers and the manager all passed away, Foley being the only living competitor in this one. Foley apparently is getting himself in shape. He wants to have another match. He had a couple of girls from OVW, I guess, training him. They showed some footage of him like working out. Mick Foley, don't work out in flannel. Like, what are you doing? He's like wearing his Cactus Jack shit, trying to do, like, yoga and stuff. I'm like, bro, sweatpants, t-shirt. I didn't like Mankind with, uh, or I'm sorry, I didn't like Paul Bear with Vader and Mankind. I mean, maybe with Mankind it's kind of okay, but. Wow. <laughs> Look at Bulldog go. Look at Owen go. Yeah, Victor, good point. Jim Cornette would come back and start that NWA shit. But even that would be kind of short-lived. Yeah, I like that idea better, keeping Paul with Taker until Kane showed up, because they, they tried a whole bunch of stupid shit. It would have been better if Paul Bearer was with Undertaker, and then Kane just showed up on his own, and then... The match they did at SummerSlam, the Boiler Room Brawl, where where Paul Bear turned on Taker, just do that, but just wait until it's Taker and Kane, and have Paul Bear turn on him and join Kane. Wow, probably would have been better than what they did, because that story got really convoluted with who was responsible for the fire, and then bringing the parents' bodies to the to Raw. And then Undertaker revealing that he's the one that did it. And then Paul Bearer's Kane's dad. And like, just stupid. Call the superstar line. It's Sonny and Shawn Michaels are on there. I don't even know if we want to hear what's going on there. Oh, by the way, shout out to uh, the name scrolling down the bottom there. Union Trains. 
who uh, chimed in with a very generous super chat on Saturday, but I wasn't aware of the currency, so I didn't realize it was actually 100 bucks. So thank you for that, uh, Union uh, Trains. You are the best. Just wanted to give you a little bit more love than I gave you on Saturday because you're the best. Smurf Williams, appreciate the five bucks. Hey, Greg, wanted to say Cena beating Bray at Mania 30 was the right call because it led to the fun house at 36. It played a big role in the story. Yeah, but that wasn't intended, you know, like the only reason they did the fun house is because of the pandemic and because I think it was just going to be a straight match at first, right? And then it turned into the fun house match or they did it kind of differently. I was actually at, I think I was at the show that no, maybe not. Where John Cena and Bray Wyatt set up the match. But I think uh, the loss at Mania 30 it wouldn't have mattered. Like, Bray could have beat Cena at Mania 30, and then you could still do all the same shit. It's the same history, you know? Um, I don't think I, that's a tough stretch to make to say it's okay that he won at WrestleMania 30 because it, it made the Funhouse match good. But by then, we had already had the Fiend crushed by Goldberg and ruined, and they'd already done a bunch of fucked up shit with him. Uh, I think maybe at the time, I was defending Cena, beating Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 30. Now, 12 years later, or 10 years later, not sure if I agree. I think now in, Bray, in Bray's uh, death, with him not being with us anymore, I think WWE might have preferred for him to beat Cena back at that WrestleMania and maybe have a little bit better of a run or career than he had. Because there were a lot of complaints when it came to Bray Wyatt in terms of how he's being pushed, how he's being used. Sometimes it was WWE's fault. Sometimes it was Bray kind of getting a little stale or whatnot. There was all sorts of issues, it seemed like. But I definitely remember nobody really being thrilled that Cena beat Wyatt. God, Vader. Vader, Vader. I'll be right back. Yeah, it it really did feel like Cena Bray, Cena Rusev was the same situation. The Rusev thing I didn't mind as much. He was pretty new. I mean, hell, he got a WrestleMania entrance with a fucking tank. Who cares if he lost? He got a payday. He worked with the best in the game. Who's complaining? Why are you complaining? Like, I think there are times when you can say, oh, Cena shouldn't have won that match. And then there are times when, okay, look, he can't lose every match. You know, every time Cena got in the ring, the fans will, he needs to lose this time. I'm like, yes, we know you think that because <laughs> you want him to lose every time. But it doesn't apply to every single fucking situation. But fans don't think like that. It's black or white. There's no thinking outside of that at all. Especially in those days when it came to Cena. Fans were butt hurt about him. Man, never seen anything like it to this day. Hadn't seen anything like it up until that point. Haven't any, seen anything like it since. And fans still hate people. Fans hate Charlotte and Roman and shit like that, but but nothing was like Cena. Ooh, look at there. Shout out to Demolition. Mankind Invader busting out the Demolition finisher on the floor. Shout out to Rhea Ripley. 
I just saw one of her posts. <laughs> Uh, nope. Oh, that's right. Stu and Helen are there in the front row. Lawler didn't know that they're there. And they show no concern. Stu never showed any concern. That is right there. That's Dallas, I believe. Let's see if we can recognize any other. Is TJ out there or Natalia? Or that might have been. That might actually might have. That maybe wasn't Dallas. That might have been. Might have been Harry. Hmm. 18,000 they crammed in there, huh? Stu always looked that way. Stu would just sit there like, yeah, 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 this match is good. Oh, Owen. Oh, what are they? Oh, wow, that sucks. I don't think Mankind knew what Owen was going to do. Owen likes to take that buckle bump, and Mankind came in behind him. They almost whacked heads there. Wow, first time in Chicago for a pay per view since SummerSlam '94. They only ran Reunited Center that one time. I still, to this day, think it's the only WWE show they've ever ran there, unless they randomly went there for a house show. But one and done. They were the first event to ever take place in the United Center and never went back. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm rooting for Rhea to beat uh, Becky Lynch, hold the title for another year, face off with Bianca next year. And since the women kind of got the shaft last WrestleMania and this WrestleMania in terms of main eventing, I'd put Rhea and Bianca on night two. I would. Night two main event. And this one is history. Well, it's not history yet. Vince thinks every near fall or every cover is a pin. Wow, look at there. Nice belly to belly. Right in front of mom and dad. I'm trying to recognize, see if I can recognize anybody else in the front row there. <laughs> Stu. The stew looks at the camera. Oh. Make the tag, Owen. Yes, Smitty. Mankind's it. He's the only one in this match alive. Even Paul Bear is not with us anymore. And Jack Doan, the referee. Is Vader missing his mask? Vader, where's your mask, bro? Oh. I like Vader just is like, I'm done with the mask today. Oh, he's got it back on now.
This match is fucking a mess. Oh my god! This is one of the worst WrestleManias I've ever seen. <laughs> this is just shit. This whole show is shit. Gotta get Bret and Austin out here to wake us up. And there is a count out or something. Count it out. Both teams. Mankind has still got that. I'm pretty sure that other referee out there worked in WCW. Him, kneeling next to Owen, not him, that's Jack, the other guy. I think he was a WCW official. I don't think he's Billy Silverman. He's somebody like that. Yes, yeah, so let's hug each other, Mankind and Cactus Jack, because your match sucked. Owen and Davey still tag champs. All right, looks like the submission match is next. I remember this video package being very good. The boy toy. Hmm. Brett was changing. It was this was the go home show, right? The profanity laced rant he went on. I was still pretty team Brett at this point. I mean, I liked Austin and stuff, but. I was pretty pissed when he cost Brett the title the night after the Final Four. I'm like, Brett held the belt for one night? That was so crazy. And I watched that live too. You're the one who's changed, Brett. Dex Pat Patterson. Brett and Pat are friends. I don't know what happens if Stone Cold Steve Austin wins and what becomes of Bret Hart then. Yeah, Juliet, you're right. This is uh, the beginning of the Austin knee knee brace because he did tweak his knee at the Final Four and started wearing that. Been wearing it ever since. Now he wears two of them. Yeah, 
here comes Austin. Boy, the early days of the backstage uh, walks to the ring. That's the best. That's one of my favorite images, is just that zoom in on the Austin 316 and it breaking. They did one one time at a pay-per-view where it didn't break, remember? But that was really well done. I mean, Austin still, I mean, he wasn't getting the Austin pops yet, but they were, he was over. Hmm. There's that that knee brace on him. All right. Brett's got a few more booze than normal. Get out of here, Brett. Walking over the glass is so perfect. How do they do that effect anyway? I mean, I don't know if it's sugar glass necessarily or what kind of glass that is that they can, does something send a vibration in and it breaks it or something? Like, how do they break it? Might have been one of the final times Brett gave his glasses away. Maybe not. He was doing that in the Hard Foundation, too. Here we go. Bell rang and Austin tackled. That was what that is something else that was cool about these two is like Brett could fight. Brett could fight. So if Austin wants to brawl, Brett will brawl. It's not like Austin is bigger than Brett. They're same size. Austin's weight is listed as heavier than Brett's, but Brett looks a little bigger. Ooh, posted early. There's one of Brett's sisters right there, along with uh, his daughter. Ashley, there's Blade. There's Okay, so now I see him. I don't see Julie, but I see Brett's other sister, and I see Brett's kids. Yeah, Brett's crotch. Look out. Right in front of Tony Atlas and Captain Lou. Oh, and the bull hair guy, the bull cut guy. The other guy with glasses, he was like in the front row last year. Guy in a red hat with glasses. Yeah, who are they? Because they were at the last, they got all got cameras and shit, but they were at the last year's WrestleMania 2 at WrestleMania 12, right front row. So I don't know who they are. Look like a group of friends. And I remember at the time, like, not loving all this stuff. They fight into the crowd just to cover for the knee injury or whatnot. To me, it's not even the match that's great. It's the moment. It's the finish that's great. It's that That's what's Hall of Fame worthy in my mind. The last five minutes of the match. Yeah, that's Georgia. Yep.
I wonder if Diana was really tight with Georgia because they her her daughter's Georgie or Georgia, right? Her and Davey have a daughter. Hell in the Cell in this match debut it for Austin and Brett. No. I'm glad they waited for Sean and Taker. Austin and Brett would not have been able to do a whole lot in terms of like crazy bumps. A submission match was best for them. Yeah, they're way up. They're fucking. Taking it to the streets. We got a shirtless guy in the crowd. What's going on here? Bowl cut guys in the middle of this. Hmm. Been screwed. Brett and being screwed. Wow, look at that. That's awesome. All right, we are back in the ringside area now. Oh, I'm trying to remember. You know, it might be the Brett the Bret Hart DVD, the one he made with WWE when he came back in like 05 or 06 and did the Hall of Fame. I think it's on that documentary where they chronicle this match. And I don't know what the song is, but it's a badass kind of like heavy metal song. It sounded pretty awesome. I can't even remember like how it goes now, but I just remember that from the DVD. Been like, oh, that's pretty good. So if anybody knows what I'm talking about, if you know, you know. <laughs> Austin with a bump. Yeah, those are those are recycled and reused steps. Uh, WWE hadn't had busted out the uh, silver ones yet. I mean, the Hell in a Cell match concept, Jacob, I think might have made more sense for Austin and Brett because Austin wasn't a submission wrestler. But in terms of what the two guys could have done in the cell, this is better. I mean, you could have done the same thing. The finish, the same finish could have happened. You could have Brett putting the, uh, the sharpshooter on Austin with him bleeding with the big cell surrounding him. And honestly, I think it would have been received well. Ooh. Sure, it wasn't what Sean and Taker did, but we didn't know that. <laughs> we wouldn't have known that at the time. It would have just been that. So I think it probably would have worked. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of like Sean Taker, Foley Taker, and a lot of the great Hell in the Cell matches they've had over the years. I don't know if Austin and Brett, how well it would have been or how good it would have been. <laughs> Tito is on the couch sleeping and he is fucking snoring I can hear you bro I'm trying to watch Brett and Austin Daniel, did Brett give away his glasses in WCW? I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, so I guess I was wrong about him never giving them away again. But I felt like it was starting to become less frequent <laughs> around this time. And I know a Canadian stampede, I'm pretty sure they all gave their glasses away. All the hearts. Oof. Ooh. Oh, 
Oh, stunner. Stunner. Pinfalls don't mean shit. <laughs> it amazes me how ba bad Bretton Backlund was as an I quit match and how good this was as a submission match. I guess that's probably best. It's really great to have this one as the best match ever and the other one as the worst match ever than having them both just be mediocre matches, you know? <laughs> Brett and Austin succeeded where Brett and Backlund failed, that's for sure. And this is now the third or maybe fourth. No, I think third. Oh, this is Brett. This is going to be Brett's final Mania match, by the way, for a long time. There's another stat for us. We are pro wrestling. Anybody else that might want to look this up? Bret Hart has had three special guest referees in WrestleMania matches. Has anybody had more? 10, 11, 13. Piper, Piper, Shamrock. There might was fuck. Was there a referee in the Vince and Shane match? Was it Bruce? It might be four. I think Bruce might have main evented the, or refereed that uh, twenty six match. <laughs> I think it might be four. Oh God, he's got it. Oh my God, it's really deep on there too. The crowd's loving this. This is a mo this is the most alive the crowd's been all night. Oh, Brett, you're in trouble. Here comes our thumbnail right here. Here it is. Boom. Down he goes. Brett's got the bell in there. So great. It's WrestleMania, baby. Yeah, now Austin. I remember watching this live being like, oh, Austin's pissed now. That's so crazy. That is so crazy. It's a weird looking body slam there. Yo, I want to thank the Juliet passing out some memberships, hooking up Lombardi Lee with a membership courtesy of the Juliet. Thank you, Juliet. You're keeping us well above that hundred member mark. Appreciate that. And thanks to all the members for joining us as we are now officially over 100. Yeah, so it is four. Okay. Wow. Four special guest referees. There's no way anybody's had that many. Well, Austin, come to think of it, <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin has got two. Well, shit. I don't know if Mike Tyson counts. Well, shit, and, and Mick Foley, too. I don't know if Fo does Foley and Mike Tyson count. I think they might. So Austin has three. There's Brett's daughter. So I think Brett and Austin might be the leaders there. Brett with four, Austin with three. Plus, Austin has been a referee twice. Maybe more than that. He was 20 and 27 when he was a referee. So Austin has had three special guest referees, and he's been a special guest referee at least twice. There might be another one stuck in there I'm forgetting. Foley and Tyson counts. Good. Ray has made the call. Whatever Ray says goes around here. I like it. Boston Crab. Simple Boston Crab on Brett. Boston Crab is what did in Brett and Jim's first tag team run against Strikeforce back in uh, 87. 
Austin refed Battle of the Billionaires. That's right. That's right. He did. So it's three and three for Austin, right? Three matches with a special guest referee and three matches as a special guest referee. Well, that's something. Mm hmm. No, Austin, you out your mind. No. <laughs> Juliet, I love that you said that. All I can tell you is wait till tomorrow. Because you ain't heard that. You ain't heard the last of it yet. <laughs> and that's the spot right there that's the spot where Austin gets now I want to look for him blading here he knocks somebody over I don't know who that is look at that guy That was a really good job of concealing the blade or whatever they did, because I did not see Austin. Like, he hit the guardrail, and he fell right in front of the fan. Oh, Jesus. And he's, oh, man, he's, he got himself good, too. Oh, now I'm trying to see, is he, he might have already bladed. Maybe he bladed before he went into the barricade. I don't know what they were doing there, but Austin's covered in blood. I don't think that was hard way. It's way too much blood for him to be busted open hard way. Oh my God. <laughs> JJ. Close. Uh, ooh. So much blood. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's so good. And watching Austin just sell in the blood and, oh, my God, right on the point of the knee, the point of the chair and the back of the knee. Oh, my God. And this is it. Oh, yeah. I was, like, I was about to say, I think Austin has a little... Look at the blood on his head! I thought Austin had a little flurry of offense here before Brett gets the sharpshooter in. God, Austin's so bloody. What I loved about early Austin before the neck injury, pre-pile driver Austin, was the selling. See here? Like, he's... 
fucking head in his snap back. He could take great bumps and he was very, uh, very animated. Oh! He was just very animated with it when he would just take offense. You know, he'd flail his arms and, you know, he'd, he'd snap his neck back and all of that really stopped after the pile driver. He became just a little more stiffer, a little more Lex Lugerish in the ring, you know, but back before that happened he was he was bumping all over the place doing top rope shit he was the best austin's a stud that he is jr oh that's so good look at that just the bl oh my god so good just stomping him Look at Brett selling it, you know? Love that. So good. It's a, such a perfect progression of their matches. You know, that Survivor Series match was more just like a, a contest, you know? Let the better man win. Now they hate each other. Now it's personal. Now it's bloody. If anybody wants to say that this is the best match in WWE history, I'm not going to argue with you. I think there's lots of others to be talked about, but if this is your personal belief, <laughs> I don't have uh, I, I don't have much to argue against it. That's for sure. Huh. Did you see Austin wiped his head off on the uh, turnbuckle there? And he's got... It's an electrical extension cord, and he's going to wrap it around. Oh, that's so... Just the way he just... Uh, uh. Brett's got that bell. Oh, I wish that bell shot would have been a little bit stiffer. He barely hit Austin, but if he would have smacked him right in the face, that would have been awesome. Might have been worth the broken nose. And now he's got him. Now he's got him. And he's got it. I mean, the crowd is going nuts. You can see the blood squirting. Say the word, Steve. Oh, so good. Oh, you can just see it. Let's just try to push. Ugh. Oh, just that's so fucking badass. Oh, uh, there's your t-shirt right there. Oh my god. And he broke it. I love how he broke it. And Brett like doesn't let go. They don't go into another sequence of moves or anything. Brett just tenacious. Unrelenting. Oh, so much blood on his face. And I swear, the way Austin's moving his head, it's spreading the blood around his his head, too. Like, oh my god, so good. That's it? He's not moving. He did not give up. And that's what's most important. And Brett is your winner. One of the best stories I've ever told. 
Such a beautiful double turn. It's about to happen here, really. This the stained mat with Austin's blood. <laughs> yeah, it is. I like Kenny's got his uh his ASICs on. <laughs> it's ninety seven still WWE this is how much I watch wrestling. They still got their old blue speakers up hanging over the uh over the ring. See, Brett's going back. Look at Shamrock, waist locking him. I mean, he just. Whoo. I like how Shamrock goes like that. <laughs> that fighting stance. <laughs> so good. Hmm. Grab another beer. You know, and watching and watching the fans too, yelling at Brett and stuff as he's leaving the ring. And this is one of my favorite parts of the whole match of the whole story they told here was after. This was all very, very powerful stuff here with Austin kicking fucking Kyoto. Fucking ass out of here. I don't need no help. And I remember even watching that night live, this was the most poignant part to me is the camera staying with Austin and just following him to the back and his stubbornness. Don't want any referees, no doctors. I am going to fucking walk to the back. If it's the last thing I do transformed him into a megastar. Like, in the loss, got beaten to a bloody pulp, got left laying in a pool of his own blood, and walked out a hero. And just this part, I mean, that whole thing, you know. Like, no matter what. Mm -hmm. I love that line by Vince. He'll go back and he'll take his pride with him right back to the locker room. I'll never forget that. And just following, like all the way through the curtain, watch. You know? I mean, Brett got the win and they're all talking about Austin. Look at that blood. In these old days, they didn't switch out the mats. Now they just tie six of them on the ring. And so if somebody gets bloody, they just pull it off and reveal the fresh one. They don't do that anymore. No, they didn't do that back then. I just spilled a little bit of my beer. Excuse me. Wiping it up. Wounded soldier. No big deal. Love on the rocks. Ain't no big surprise. There we go. There we go. I mean, I don't know in Vince's mind if he knew right at that moment this is going to be my guy. I don't know. But he definitely probably had to be feeling pretty good. 
I really like Farouk's look here with the hat and the tanker. They the thugs also. Oh, yeah, I forgot. This is still the Savio era. Did Farouk just call Ahmed Johnson a colored boy? <laughs> what? <laughs> I find that hysterical for some reason. <laughs> That's really funny. Oh, these guys, man. These two fucking crackheads. PG-13. Wolfie D. Jamie Dundee, crackhead. Clarence Mason? Savio. There's D'Lo. You're looking at the real deal now. <laughs> PG-13, you suck. I hated them. I never liked them. I remember they were tag team champions in like USWA all the time. Uh, Nate Dog, I agree with you, man. Appreciate the five bucks. I like this one. When we watched it live, we enjoyed it. We really did. It was wild. This is what I want to see Cross and AOP do with uh, Lashley and Streets. <laughs> oh wow they've already announced it look at there boston fleet center march 29th 1998 mark your calendars guys next year we're going to boston Yeah, oh, that's right. Chicago, LOD. The Legion of Doom. Oh, yeah, and I love Lawler's uh, scream when Ahmed comes out with the uh, shoulder pads. It's awesome. He looks so good like that with him, doesn't he? They had such a badass theme, LOD. And they've got a kitchen sink with them and a two by four. Putting the shoulder pads on Ahmed was a great touch. Boy, I was so happy. I watched Raw the night LOD came back when they were back in the Manhattan Center. And it was wild. Ooh. So cr crush uh, demolition and LOD hooking back up here. Oh my god. PG-13. Oh, D-Lo. Good to see D-Lo. <laughs> Clarence Mason got debriefed. A lot of dead guys in this one, too. We're looking at three. Crush and both members of LOD.
God, who do you think in this match is the toughest person? I might have to go Farouk or Hawk. But they're all badasses, so's animals, so's crush. <laughs> oh wow, Ahmed leaping over barricades. I do like this one is just do whatever you want. I think Stu and Helen might have bounced. I don't see them front row anymore. They are, they either went to the shitter or they've gone to the back. Hawks got lumber. He caught it. Good thing that 2 by 4 didn't fly out into the crowd. Somebody get me that referee's name. I swear that is Billy Silverman. Maybe it is Billy Silverman. Look at that table. How is that table holding those guys? I don't like what's happening here at all. Oh, my. Oh, that looked like fucking shit. How did that table be? How was that table able to hold two 300 pounders or guys that are 270? So we're 500 pounds on that table. It's fine. <laughs> that was a bot. That was not good. Whatever was going on there was not good. I'm more curious in finding out who this fucking referee is. I swear that's Billy Silverman from WCW. Horizon Stadium main parking. I love it. Oh. PG-13's got Ahmed and I think it's Farouk, yeah. I don't know where that powder came from. There we go. Finally, that table breaks properly. I like how Lawler's coughing from the uh, <laughs> the baby powder. <clears throat> oh no, rope. Oh, look at Mason and that other guy. That's D'Lo Brown. He's a CPA, JR. You'd remind us of that 75 fucking times. It's almost as, it's almost as if Jim Ross couldn't believe that a black dude went to college and he had to remind us every fucking time that D'Lo's a pretty smart guy. 
All I have to do is talk to him to know that. Jim Ross is always so amazed by that. You know, King uh, J. J. L. Brown is a CPA. What? You telling me he went to college? People actually do that? <laughs> I love Brian Adams. Crush is so great. I like Brian Adams, the singer, too. But this Brian Adams is especially a good. Look at D'Lo and his tux. D'Lo Brown. Oh. What was D'Lo doing by the next year's Mania? Was he in the ring yet? I think he was. Oh, ouch. Parking sign upside the head. Mm. Oh, over the top. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, that's right. D'Lo had to be in that tag team battle royal. I was trying to think because I know that later on that year he was like European champion and shit. So it was probably starting to happen. We got Cokes, Waters, might be a Snapple in there for me. The fucking noose. Oh, God, that was just a bad bump for the sake of a bad bump by Ron Simmons there. Coming off the uh, the top rope. Shout out to George Napolitano Nanano out there uh, taking pictures in the front row. Usually he's ringside, but he's behind the barricade for just he ain't getting in the middle of this. Still don't know how to pronounce his name, but that's what I say. Oh, who's getting the fire crush fire extinguisher to the to the face James Krause Iron City has been your beer of choice nice I drink these uh, snazzy little local 805s 805 freeway here in town D'Lo rocking the suspenders. I mean, this really is, I mean, I'd say, what, seven on three? If you include the entire nation. Oh, Crush just ate a doomsday device. Oh, he's got two by four. He's got wood. Clothesline, bitches. Oh. No, don't let the post-match brawl... Ah, oh, I want to hear the LOD's theme song. They got a great theme song, LOD. One of the best ones I've ever done. 
It holds up, too. I think it, it's still, uh... Sounds good. Oh, D'Lo's gonna get... He's still just this guy. <laughs> He's not D'Lo yet. You know something I don't know? I have no idea what D'Lo's real name is. No idea. Oh, there goes Wolfie D. He's about to get his... Oh, double doomsday. Wolfie D double for you. Oh, God. They would do a deal on Raw a few months later where LOD beat the shit out of PG-13 and they were just gone. Gone from the company. WWE just got rid of them. But I'm pretty sure back in the day, like PG-13 wrestled against Brian Christopher and Jerry Lawler for the tag titles a few times in USWA. Oh yeah, I do like that it was NOD versus LOD. I never thought about that. That's cool. Nod versus LOD. Took me 27 years to realize that. <laughs> Ahmed with the hat on. And he's got it. Where'd he get the chain from? Oh, he stole it. He stole it from PG-13. Well, they probably deserved it. Enjoy your new gold chain, Ahmed. I remember this in your house. April the 20th, it's going to tell me, right? 420, I always remember this one. I had a date that night of the show. And my roommate taped it, or I ordered it myself and taped it, but he was kind of home, so I asked him to just kind of eyeball it, make sure it recorded properly. And when I got home, he was just, he had it queued up. He had, like, the paper he was over, he rewound it and queued up where mankind went headfirst to the table. He's like, he, he thought it was the craziest thing. I'm like, that was weird looking. They gimmicked the table like a hole got punched out of it when his head went through it. But he was, oh, what's up, Vlad? He was watching it by himself. And I guess marked out in our apartment all by himself. It wasn't that good of a day because I was home by 11 o'clock that night, but. And here comes Shawn Michaels out for the main event. You could be in the main event. Look at you pretending to hobble on your knee. Look at him pretending. Oh, oh, my knee. It's unfortunate. This, that's right. I remember this. Okay, watch this, guys. He's already doing the click thing. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna flash the click symbol here in a minute. WCW guys are watching this right now. Sean, will you hurry up and get to the ring? You're not even wrestling this year. What did that say? The cream team? What the fuck? The cream team? Is that a spinoff of Backdoor Sluts 9? Yeah, why don't you leave, Lawler? Sorry, I'm just... I, I, when I hear this song, I mean, I have to shake it, you know? You can't not shake it. It's funny that he gets an entrance in the main event. He's not in the main event. They got his pyro. Is he going to have to go in and do the whole spinny thing? Look at the pyro guys just ducking down. Like, nobody sees us. Sean, you are taking up too much time. Get in the ring, do your little twirl. 
Do your muscles, all that shit. Are you going to go around the ring again? Another lap? No, go up the stairs. Go up the fucking stairs. Okay, good. God, enough's enough, Sean. Oh, you're wearing one of them belts that doesn't have the holes in it. I remember those. Very popular stuff in the 90s. Winning the title last year in the main event on commentary this year. Stop pretending like you're hurt, Sean. So on, I'm kind of, I rarely agree with Lawler because I hate Lawler, but he's right on the money here. Enough of this shit. Sean, go sit down. You opted out of WrestleMania. So you go sit on your ass. Fucking Vlad. He's so, he's so happy. He's so happy all the time. Sid had such a good look. He never looked better than with that black vest and that fucking winged eagle around his waist. Oh, so good. So good. No, there's more people than you. It's not just you. I believe you, Sid, that you're not scared of the dark. And I also believe, Sid, that he's not scared of the Undertaker. I don't believe he's the only one not scared of the Undertaker. I, too, am not scared of the dark. I don't give a shit. Dark doesn't freak me out at all. Make it as dark as you want. I'm fine. Undertaker, also not scared of him because I know he's a, a wrestler and wrestling's fake. Uh, so it's mace, basically me and Sid are the only two. So Sid just left me out. Only me and Greg are not afraid of the dark. Only me and Greg are not afraid of the Undertaker. <coughs> We're live, pal. This was awesome. I loved this. Now, at the time watching this, I thought that he was going back to this look. This is maybe one of the early examples of a special main WrestleMania entrance, you know? Taker's wearing special gear for a special match. He doesn't even have the purple gloves. He's got the gray gloves. And this was very cool. A young wrestling fan who never grew up watching Undertaker, seeing Undertaker don the gray and the hat and the shit again is no big deal. But when you've already seen Undertaker evolve to where he'd gotten to, he'd done, he's got the teardrop and the leather thing, and I hated that. So him going back to this like classic look with the tie, and oh my god, I loved it. And this was, uh, this is one of the, the things that uh, Shawn Michaels losing his smile. Taker's one of the people that benefited because. They put the belt on him here. They claim that was the plan all along. I just don't know how you don't do Brett and Sean for the title, you know. But they they claim, WWE claims that Sid was going to win the belt anyway and beat Sean on that Thursday show, but I have my doubts. And going into the show, I remember a lot about it. I remember watching that night. This is one of those matches that is 100% definitively predictable. There was not going to be another outcome other than Taker winning here. And we knew it going into it that if one thing is for sure on this show is that now Undertaker is going to win the WWE title for real this time. Not just for four days, but for, but for real. It took six years. Almost. Classic Taker. I mean, that's my favorite 
This is my favorite rendition of him. And I think at the time I was kind of not understanding that Taker was doing a special special gear for his victory. I thought he was going back to this look and I would have preferred that to be honest. Yeah. Okay, so we're WrestleMania 13 here. So what is it? He's 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 5 and 0. Oh. Taker is only 5 and 0. Oh. He'd win another 17 matches in a row before he would lose his streak. That's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, we are processing. They really did. Even though this was a second run, it really was his first real run. Because even when he beat Hogan, that was just a way to to gum up the works to put it on Flair. You know, there was never really a a plan to keep the belt on him. Where this was, he was going in this match to win the title and be the champion for a while. So it was clear. Second Mania main event for Sid. He's been in two of them. And uh, his opponents are somewhat legendary. I think that guy Hulk Hogan won a title or two in his in his career. Uh, and Undertaker wasn't half bad either. I, love, I mean, Sid's music, so good. That Full Metal first album, Sid, Goldust, Taker, Razor, Sean, Brett, Diesel. Full Metal and and Volume 3, those are the two best they've ever done. Sid. The lowering thing, this the, they did this for Sid, and I also remember Mark Marrow getting it. Like a little pinwheel fireworks and whatnot. Pinwheel pyro. <laughs> the way that Sid, the font is, it looks like one of, what are those like Tesla um, machine cars that are out there? I saw one on the freeway today driving to work. It's my first time seeing one ever. And I passed him. Well, it was a double A. We were both going down the freeway. He was kind of going slow, and I passed him. I kind of looked at it. It's the ugliest looking thing I've ever seen. I don't. What do they do? Do they drive themselves? I don't even know the name of the cars. They're Teslas, right? And they're metal looking, and they look, <laughs> they look fucking ridiculous. They look like what we, what humans would have thought futuristic vehicles look would have looked like in the forties, like in the nineteen forties. Man, in a hundred years from now, this is what they're going to look like. They're not even night. They're not even pretty looking. Like it's just like a stainless steel bot. What is Brett? What the fuck, dude? Brett and Sean are both in the main event anyway. Brett's in the ring. I forgot he gets in the ring. I forgot he cuts a promo. This solidified this more than anything. Solidified Brett's heel turn is him doing this. Look at Vince holding Sean. God. Vince got up. You slammed the door on our friendship. Y'all were friends? You are a fraud. (laughs) 
Sid's got to deck him, right? There you go. Brett's going to get a power bomb. I love it. You kind of deserve this, Brett. I ain't going to lie. If anything, that solidified the heel turn more than anything else because Brett would also come back. He's going to come back, right? Taker's just stoically standing there. He's just going to sit back and wait. He's not going to get in the middle of this. It's not in Taker's nature. <laughs> I belong, crybaby. Friendship? <laughs> Hoopla? It is raining again. It's been a rainy day. It's been a rainy Easter in San Diego, and I can hear it again. Mm -hmm. Psycho Sid always wore the same elbow pad with that yellow thing on it. Yeah, Sid, when he goes, I don't know shit. He's cur Everybody was cursing on that Raw, man. <laughs> Regina Reese, Brett wasn't surprised. Taker brought back the gray. Yeah, when Brett came out to cut his promo, he should have, before he started like getting mad at everybody, he should have been like, yo, Taker, that's pretty cool. It's cool that you brought that back. Lawler, how about you just eat a dick? How about we do that? That would be best for me. Yeah, Victor, I remember. I remember Brett was supposed to work Sid at, uh, at In Your House, and then Sid uh, got the, ball, the softball disease. I remember the Raw where Austin... He approached somebody backstage talking about, oh, it was Gorilla. I think it was Gorilla. And he's like, uh, Sid's got a match with Brett on April the 20th. I want Brett instead. And then Gorilla's like, okay, you got it. And that's how they like explained away wherever the hell Sid was. And then he was in a car accident. There was a car accident as well. That was either right before or right after in your house, Revenge of Taker. Because I think he was in that with uh, maybe Doug Furness, maybe Davy Boy. I forgot who was in the in the car. But there was some sort of car accident that I think happened in Canada, but I don't remember the story totally. Shout out to La Femme Nikita. Cool sign. Yeah, Southern California's got some. Where do you live, Juliet? We got some rain all day yesterday and a lot on and off today. Really made Easter somewhat difficult, but we got through it. I didn't get an Easter basket this year. No chocolate or chocolate bunny or nothing. Y'all have any Easter Bunny chocolate you share with me? I didn't get any. <laughs> Brett, Brett definitely did deserve that power bomb from Sid. Ain't no doubt. Oh, Sean, the last thing you need to be doing is dispensing advice. Please spare me. Oh, Virginia Beach. I might have known that. <coughs> Been to Virginia Beach a couple times when I lived in North Cackey Lackey.
You're somewhat close, Juliet, to that bridge shit. Jacob Bay, I don't know, man. That's a tough call. I think the Brett screwed Brett line is what did it. That sit down interview with JR. Mm -hmm. Nice, right in front of those fans there. Oh, oh, and the table. Okay, that's why the table was so strong. It looks reinforced. It's a Japanese table. Damn, Regina, near 90, huh? Spring is in the air. That's hot. Sid looks like he's struggling to carry Taker over there. We get hot here in San Diego, but it usually doesn't come till mid to late summer, early fall. We can have sweltering August, or I'm sorry, uh, October, and even November days. I've had, a, I've had 100 degrees on Thanksgiving before. It's crazy. But the climate is changing. Last the last three season, last three years here in San Diego, it's been all over the place. It's not been anything like what it's normally like. And I think even in Minnesota, like way up in fucking Minnesota, they got like no snow this year and shit. So shit's just weird, you know. Every what everybody's used to isn't happening this year. And it has a, there's El Nino coming through too, but still, it's like shit's a mess. All we need is for Yellowstone to blow up, and then we'll be in great shape over here. We've got earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, and super volcanoes here in the United States. So if you want to live here and move here, pick your natural disaster. you got a whole bunch of them. The east has got the hurricanes, the middle of the country has got the tornadoes, and the west coast has the earthquakes. And then the north has the potential Yellowstone disaster that will kill us all if it ever happens. <clears throat> what do you guys think in your mind? Because I'm trying to think. I don't I don't even know. I might go, I might vote WrestleMania 12, but Taker wrestled, you know, two Seven footers back to back years, and Sid and well, shit, technically three. He'd be working Kane too. So maybe we could. Well, I mean, we'll start with that. WrestleMania twelve, WrestleMania thirteen. Undertaker Nash, Undertaker Sid. Which match was better? I'm voting WrestleMania twelve. I thought I thought Diesel and, and Taker was really good. We should throw Kane in there too at WrestleMania fourteen. Nash, Sid, and Kane strung up three consecutive Mania opponents for Undertaker. Of those three matches, what do you think the best one is? I might still go... I might go Nash, Taker, Kane, Taker, Sid, Taker. I don't know, that's tough. If you guys have a different order... I'm not going to argue with you because you can make a case for Kane. Oh yeah, Mike, you're you're in Kansas, so yeah, you definitely get tornadoes. When I lived in Michigan, we got them up there. When I lived in North Carolina, we got them up there. I've seen a couple of funnel clouds. It is fucking freaky. I've definitely shit my pants over a tornado a couple times, but as you guys can tell, I've never been killed by one on account of the fact that I'm here now streaming. But I definitely spent, especially when I lived in Michigan, I spent a few nights in the basement with my family. Candles lit. 
Just get get down below. We're just waiting for the storm to pass and hoping that our house will stay standing. Oh, over the top rope. I love how these guys have moved, these cameramen. Okay, so they're definitely not like fans. They're cameramen or something. Because they're now over there sitting by Brett's family. Come on, Sid. I don't remember Sid and Taker going into the crowd here, so they might not go far. Right in front of Brett's sister. Love it. Oh, Ben, the WrestleMania 20 match was better than 14. Okay, so let's, let's rule 14 out then. Let's, we're going to go Nash. We're going to go Nash uh, at WrestleMania 12 is the best between the three. Yeah, Taker, you hit too many ropes there on that elbow drop. Lawler, shut up. Tito. Tito's being very cool. Hey, fill me in on the uh, on the basketball games. I saw that NC State beat Duke. I got a lot of friends back home happy about that. When does Caitlin Clark and the and the hot girl from LSU play each other? That's the game I want to watch. What's her name? Reese from LSU. Greg like. <clears throat> <clears throat> Victor Colon, Victor Cologne, you're going to want to tune in tomorrow. Noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. <clears throat> I don't know if I've ever seen Undertaker deliver a power slam before. It's actually pretty good. He still has the... Why is he doing the thing? I didn't realize he still had the teardrop. Stop trying to pass it off as a tattoo. Manana. Okay. Tomorrow night. We're going to be busy watching Raw. I just remember all that stuff from last year. They were in the finals, and I'm like, oh, I hope they face each other this year. Now I guess it's an Elite Eight matchup, right? I have no dog in the fight. I don't care who wins. I just I just like the dynamic. I like that everybody has an opinion about it. They just seem like two star basketball players uh, creating a rivalry. What's the big deal? They move on to the WNBA or whatever. They can either be teammates or rivals there too. But that Angel Reese is smoking hot. Oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad, Chris. Thanks for the five bucks. I came here to forget about Duke losing. No oh, man, if I was still living in North Carolina right now, I know I'd have so many people just very emotionally invested in that. I didn't I didn't like any of the team. I didn't like Duke, Carolina, or State. But Duke I especially hated growing up. Just because they were beating Michigan for the titles and stuff, and it was pissing me off. And all my friends were trolling me. Yeah, Michigan sucks, ACC for life. Fuck you. But I respect Coach K. Grant Hill played for the Pistons. We had to do a pantomiming exercise in drama class when I was in high school, and I uh, I recreated the Christian Leitner shot, but you had to do it in a mime. You know, you had to just kind of act it out physically in class. 
and I did it for the whole class, and like everybody knew right away. I got a Road Warrior pop for that too. I got a lot of Road Warrior pops in school. Once for the gold jumpsuit. Why, why is there a split screen on Sean? We have to watch him watch the match. <laughs> ACC is about to crumble. I'm so mentally checked out about what the fuck's going on with these conferences now. But back when I was a kid, there's only nine teams in the ACC: State, Carolina, Duke, Clemson, Virginia, Maryland. Uh, who the fuck else? It's like nine, dude. Uh, Virginia Tech, maybe. No, Georgia, uh, Georgia Tech, and a couple other teams. I forgot. But man, back back then they were just crazy dominant. Wake Forest, another team. Tim Duncan. Oh. Men's Final Four, Purdue, NC State, Alabama, UConn. I don't give a gluten-free fuck who wins that at all. <laughs> don't care. I mean, maybe State because I have my, my best friend's husband went to NC State. My best friend in childhood growing up went to NC State. NC State, I got a lot of engineer friends, and they all went to NC State. So I might root for NC State, but that just brings back too many bad memories. Do win one for Jimmy V. Let's root for NC State. It's been a long time since NC State won a national championship. I want to say it was like 1981 with Jimmy V. <clears throat> so we'll root for them. We're going to go Wolfpack. Dun, 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 dun. Sid, don't... Oh, watch yourself, Sid. Oof. It's hard to watch him do that, isn't it? Sid, jump off the second rope. Sid, in about two years, you're going to have a really bad day. How do they get Sid's boot off that night? I mean, if he had a compound fracture and his leg was all twit, how did they get his boot off? They have to cut it off? That would be so gnarly. Sid crapped himself? His self. He crapped his self. <laughs> Ray, I, he might have. He did? Is there a story about this? He shit his britches on WrestleMania? Undertaker's got a fistful of it if he did. Undertaker was much more capable up here. Sid's not even standing. I don't know what Taker's going for. Top rope clothesline, usually. Yep. Hits him perfectly with it. Oh, urban legend. Okay. I don't think, you know, I don't think you could really shit your pants in the middle of like an athletic, con you know, your body's like in, in the throes of competition or whatever. I don't know if you could like drop turds out of your ass, but you could definitely have something that happened like CM Punk, you know, where you're just on a lot of medi medication and you just have some liquid leakage. <laughs> I could see that happening, but full-on turds. Oh, wow. Sid reversed the... That is not good. Wow. Undertaker really trusted Sid there. Sid's going to pin him? Nope. You should have been facing the uh, hard cam on that one, Sid. Never forget going to a house show with my dad in 96 and Undertaker 
It's wrestling mankind. And he set mankind up, you know, before the tombstone. And I before Taker did it, I went like this. And I did the throat slashing thing. And then, oh, there's Brett. And then when Taker immediately did it after, my dad looked at me like, how the fuck did you know? Fucking Brett is... I, I forgot that Brett came out with a chair. I just thought he came out right at the end for the finish. Yeah, so if they didn't... If you didn't know that the heel turn for Brett was happening in the Austin match... They're hammering it home here. They're like, oh no, he's going to be heel. Full blown. Wow, Taker going for the cover after a choke slam is rare. It's funny seeing Taker like go for near falls and stuff. Taker does that a couple has done that before. And I used to think it was like a botch or miscommunication, but he's meaning to do that. I think he's trying to act like he's going for a clothesline and he's missing, but he just looks like he's jumping over Sid and landing on the ground. Power bomb. And Brett is back. Look at him. Just... <laughs> And Sid Lane, I mean, I do kind of like that they made Brett responsible for this. And that was why these two were supposed to face it in your house. Tombs, that was perfect, wasn't it? My God. And as a fan at the time in 1997, I had a lot of respect for Undertaker. And I was always kind of annoyed how they always kept him away, purposely kept him away from the championship. Had him wrestle the giant Gonzalez's and the Bundy's and the million dollar corporations and just keeping him busy, never being able to actually contend. And so now that he actually wins the title at WrestleMania, winning in the main event, saying like, we're going with you now. Part of me was like, well, fucking finally. But the other part of me was like super happy because this was a long time coming. This is this is an image right here that I felt like we should have had in 1993, 1994, 1995. And the fact that it took us this long to get to it is a little bit obnoxious. Undertaker didn't even know how to hold the belt. Look at him. Look at Earl. Sid, get the fuck out of the ring. No, even though I was a Brett guy, that, that didn't mean I wasn't happy when other guy... God, that belt is so beautiful, isn't it not? Jesus Christ. It's almost as if you can look at it in the back. I got two. I got the real one in the wall, and then I got the fake one right there. I love that belt, if you can't tell. There's a lot of men who have held that belt undeservingly, says Sean. Who's that? Up until this point, Sean, who would that have been? Hogan, I guess? I forgot to mention earlier when Sean was making his entrance and he flashed the click symbol. The next night on Nitro, when the NWO is coming out to the ring, Kevin Nash is going to look at the camera and he's going to go right back at you, HBK. I remember that. And I'm like, Nash responded to him. That's so great. They're talking to each other across promotions into the camera. That's very cool. But Sean knew he could get away with it, and Nash knew he could get away with it over there. <clears throat> I 
And that's a wrap on WrestleMania 13. We can watch WrestleMania 14. It's up next if you guys want. I don't think I have the energy. It's been a long, long Easter Sunday for me. So <clears throat> anyway, thank you so much, guys, for uh, hanging out with us tonight. This one was a fun one to go back and watch 27 years ago. WrestleMania 13. Love that we got this one out of the way finally and watched it. And uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of you did, too, because we had a pretty uh, decent audience in here all night. So this was great. It was a lot of fun. It, does, it definitely uh, puts a nice little end to our WrestleMania watch alongs for this year. Now we're going to move into maybe some backlashes or some WCW shows for the month of April as uh, we move into our post-WrestleMania life. And I have some things I'm working on on the channel, a couple of rebranding things, some new looks that we're going to be doing this year and constantly evolving, constant, constantly doing stuff. And uh, this week is going to be a big one. So please make sure you join us tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be dropping a video at noon Eastern on the channel tomorrow morning, WrestleMania special episode. And then tomorrow night, we're going to be live immediately following Monday Night Raw because The Rock and Roman Reigns are both scheduled to be in Brooklyn. Go home show for WrestleMania, or at least the go home Raw. And we got to see what Cody's response is going to be to his beatdown last week uh, outside by the buses and whatnot. So tomorrow is going to be... A big one. So make sure you join us. It's going to be a fun week, and uh, I'm ready to start gearing up for WrestleMania. In a couple days, I'm going to hit the store. I'm going to get all my weekend supplies. It's going to be a blast. Looking very much forward to hanging out with all of you a lot over the next seven days, eight days, actually. So you guys take care. I will catch you twice tomorrow, once in the morning, and then once tomorrow night after Raw. Have a great rest of your Sunday and Easter Sunday, and thank you so much for being here as always. Love y'all.